what would you say if I promised you 40% more length for under a hundred bucks? Before you get too excited, I am talking about focal length. We're going to review a great teleconverter that you can buy for under a hundred bucks on the used market. The Kenko Teleplus Pro 300, 1.4x teleconverter, available for Nikon and Canon systems. Just want us to take a minute to appreciate the amazing early 2000s packaging. It really takes you back to the good old days. Look at the side of the box here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six different fonts. This gives me confidence that this was designed by engineers. Opening up the box, we have the teleconverter, Kenko NAF. So if you're looking for a Canon one, you're looking for one that says CAF, made in Japan, and this is the DG. There's also a DGX teleconverter. Optically, they are identical. Old school instructions, they didn't even need the other side. Everything you need to know about this teleconverter on one page. In this case, we're looking at the 1.4X. This is a five element and four groups teleconverter with multi-coating. I believe the optics are by Hoya, so these are high quality optics. Compatibility, you need a lens with a wide open aperture of f5.6 or faster. It weighs about 133 grams. It's extremely lightweight. It's small. Realistically, it only adds two centimeters, about an inch uh, to the size of your lens. So not a big deal to pack around. Instructions are simple. You put it on the lens and then you mount it to the camera and then you reverse those steps to remove it. Don't use it for lenses under 28 millimeters. Don't use multiple teleconverters simultaneously. Don't combine it with extension tubes. The short version, the 10 second review is, this is an excellent teleconverter. It's small, it's light, it doesn't degrade image quality all that much. And just like all teleconverters, a 1.4x teleconverter, you're going to lose a stop of light. In general, teleconverters are going to work best with fast telephoto primes. The Nikon 300mm AF, the original crinkle finish one I have here, legendary lens, pairs excellently with this teleconverter. Easily snaps into place, and then you mount it to your camera as you would a regular lens. One of the advantages of this teleconverter is just how compatible it is with lenses. So Nikon never actually released a Nikon teleconverter that autofocuses with these screw drive lenses. So are, you are limited to third party teleconverters. The good news is that this particular one works quite well. On the screen, I'm gonna put up the official list regarding which lenses are compatible. While this teleconverter is widely compatible, I don't want you guys to damage your lenses so if you're not sure whether it's compatible, let's ask in the comments section below or do some research on the forums and I'm sure somebody out there will help you. You guys know I don't like to pixel peep too much, but with teleconverters it actually makes sense to pixel peep because you are putting additional glass between your lens and your camera. So you don't want it to degrade the image quality too much. And I'm happy to report that even after pixel peeping, I was pretty happy with the results. Now, a teleconverter is going to emphasize any existing weaknesses. So if your lens suffers from heavy chromatic aberration, a teleconverter is going to emphasize that even more. So it really makes sense to put it on the best quality glass you can find. A teleconverter is a great way to discover if you need a longer lens. For example, if you have a lens like a 300 millimeter, and you constantly find yourself using a teleconverter and you find that you just never take it off, maybe what you need is a longer lens. Alternatively, if you don't need a longer lens all that often, a teleconverter is a great cheap way to get that additional reach just a few times that you need it. A 1.4X teleconverter, I believe, is a sweet spot. Instantly turns a 300 millimeter F4 lens into a 420 millimeter, which is just awesome for that extra bit of reach especially if you're looking to do basic wildlife or bird photography and you don't want to shell out for an exotic telephoto. The build quality of this guy is actually really nice. It's supposed to be a budget product, but it does feel like a professional, professional tool. Very little play, if any, 
clicks into place as if it was a first party product. It's very easy to use it, quite easy to put it on and remove it. You have this convenient switch here. I was also pleasantly surprised that the teleconverter worked well with my Nikon 70 to 300 millimeter AFP lens. A lot of the downsides are going to be common to all teleconverters. While you do multiply the focal length, making this lens a 420 millimeter lens, you do lose a stop of light. So the lens with the teleconverter mounted, this particular 300 millimeter f4, will behave like a 420 millimeter f5.6. Coupled with the fact that this teleconverter performs a lot better when you stop it down two thirds of a stop, and this lens performs a lot better when you stop it down to at least f5. Really, this becomes a 420 millimeter f8 kind of deal. And at that point, you have to ask yourself, is image quality going to be affected if you then have to jack up the ISO to compensate? So these are all questions you have to ask yourself. Luckily, this guy is really cheap, so the experiment won't cost you too much. Then there's the matter of autofocus speed. Just adding an extra connection and then having it connect to the camera again. So this lens right here, which is not a particularly fast lens to focus uh, in the first place, you're going to lose autofocus speed. With a lens like this, I find that it's a bit of a, a bit of a wash. I think I prefer actually using this lens without a teleconverter because at 300 millimeters it's 6.3 already. So I prefer to use this without a teleconverter and just crop in uh, versus losing an additional stop of light and having to shoot at f9 or, or whatever. The teleconverter will emphasize any existing optical aberrations or inadequacies. So if the lens exhibits heavy chromatic aberration wide open, such as this older lens does, uh, you're going to spend a bit more time in post-processing uh, removing all of that. And sometimes it's not just a matter of clicking in Lightroom once. Sometimes the chromatic aberration uh, is a lot heavier. The teleconverter, as great as the build quality is, is not weather sealed. So that's another thing to keep in mind. For each photo, you can see the camera lens combination that was used. For under a hundred bucks, you open up a whole new range of possibilities in terms of focal length. You lose a bit in terms of autofocus speed, and you lose a tiny, tiny, tiny bit in terms of image quality. But a lot of that can be offset with today's advanced post-processing software. And especially today's noise removal software makes quick work of pictures that are taken even at 6400 ISO and above. Just like with all photography, the actual subject matter is a lot more important. The quality of the light is more important. In fact, what I've heard, and this is going to sound a little controversial, but old school wildlife photographers used to say that if you need more than 400 ISO for wildlife photography, then you don't have enough light and you might as well stay home. Maybe that's outdated thinking because today's sensors and today's processors allow us to shoot at crazy high ISOs. But the fact remains, if there's not enough light on the subject, we aren't able to create that interesting contrast. Overall, I found it most useful for stationary or slow moving wildlife, perched birds, situations where I have the time to focus and compose. I did not enjoy using this combination for birds in flight. I think it's a little masochistic. Of course, adding a teleconverter means you have to watch those shutter speeds even more. If you're going by the one over focal length rule, your focal length is now effectively multiplied by 1.4. There are other versions of this teleconverter out there, other Kenko models. I can only speak for this one. I've heard it's better than the older MC4, but having not tested one, I can't definitively say that. So if you have experience with this teleconverter or any others, let us know in the comment section. And as always, thank you for watching and subscribe for more.